This story has all of the makings of a spy thriller. A top ISRO scientist accused of espionage and selling rocket technology to Pakistan. This after he was honey trapped by two women. This isn't a piece of fiction. This is the real life story of how a scientist named Nambi Narayanan was falsely accused of espionage. His story has now been turned into a film starring Madhavan. So how was Nambi Narayanan finally exonerated? And why is he still fighting for justice nearly 30 years on? Let me explain. Nambi Narayanan's story goes back to October 1994 when Mariam Rashida, a Moldavian national, was arrested for overstaying her visa. It was her arrest that started this bizarre espionage plot. Mariam Rashida had come to India for health reasons and to help her friend Fauzia Hassan get school admission for her daughter. But she ended up overstaying her visa when flights to the Maldives were suspended because of a plague scare. When she approached Inspector Vijayan of the special branch in Tiruvannamalai, seeking permission to stay behind, he confiscated her passport and arrested her for overstaying. The Kerala police and the intelligence bureau then said that Mariam confessed that confidential documents belonging to the Indian Space Research Organisation had been leaked by its own scientists. Soon Mariam's friend Fauzia was also arrested and in November 1994 the case was taken over by the special investigation team headed by Sibi Matthews who was then the DIG crime of Kerala. The investigation revealed that the two Maldivian women had made telephone calls from their hotel room in Tiruvannamalai to D Sasikumaran who was a senior scientist with ISRO. Sasikumaran was arrested on November 21, 1994. 9 days later Nambi Narayanan who was the director of the cryogenic project lab at ISRO was also arrested. I'm going to pause the police story here to quickly give you some background on where ISRO's space program stood in the 1990s. The PSLV was labeled a success with several successful missions. ISRO was looking to develop the GSLV, a more powerful rocket that could carry heavier satellites and could go deeper into space. What it needed was a cryogenic engine to power the rocket. At the time India had signed a deal with Russian agency Glav Cosmos for the cryogenic engine and technology transfer but the US pressured Russia to drop the deal and as a result India was forced to launch its own mission to indigenously develop the technology with Nambi Narayanan as its project director and Sasi Kumaran as his deputy The reason this back story is important is because Nambi Narayanan believes that his arrest was part of a US backed conspiracy to thwart India's development of the cryogenic engine. Now back to the main story. There were two others arrested as well. K Chandrasekhar who was the Indian representative of Glav Cosmos and S K Sharma a labor contractor. Nambi Narayanan and the others were booked under India's Official Secrets Act. They were threatened and tortured in police custody. The story that Kerala police spun was that Nambi Narayanan and Sasi Kumaran had fallen into a honey trap set by Mariam and Fauzia, and they passed on secret documents and drawings of ISRO on the Vikas engine, on the cryogenic engine technology, and the PSLV's flight data and drawings. These were then passed on to a Pakistani nuclear scientist and in return they received an amount running into lakhs of US dollars. The Kerala police had a faithful accomplice in a section of the media that was all too happy to publish the sensational claims and the half truths. Now given that this was an extremely sensitive case with possible national ramifications the Congress led Kerala government transferred the case to the CBI in December 1994. After 50 days in jail, Nambi Narayanan was released on bail in January 1995. But it was only 16 months later, in May 1996, that all six accused in the ISRO spy scandal were vindicated. The CBI's 104-page final report found that the case was false and that there was no evidence to back any of the allegations. There are three important reasons why Nambi Narayanan was finally exonerated. One, 
There was no official complaint from ISRO. In fact, a committee of senior scientists was later set up to probe whether any documents went missing or were stolen. But this committee concluded that there were no missing documents. What's more, ISRO does not have a system of classifying documents as top secret, secret, classified, etc. Another crucial point is that Nambi Narayanan, as a senior scientist, had access to drawings. But ISRO had not issued any to him. 2. There was no evidence of money being exchanged. The CBI report said that no incriminating documents of money, foreign or Indian, had been recovered from the accused. 3. The CBI concluded that these accused persons were forced to make statements on suggested lines under duress. So what could be the motives for this false case against a top Indian scientist? There are a few theories. Some have alleged that the police officers involved were using this high-profile case to get a promotion. Some others have suggested that this was essentially a political fight between two factions of the Congress party, one led by then Chief Minister K. Karnakaran and the other by A.K. Antony. The case ultimately forced K. Karnakaran to quit as Chief Minister in March 1995. Then there are others like Nambi Narayanan, who have alleged that this was part of a US-led conspiracy to derail India's space program. I just want to quickly point out the media's role here. The whole story began with a small report of Maryam Rashida overstaying her visa. Then a media house called Mangalam picked up the story and began connecting Maryam with various businessmen and scientists. Soon all major media houses in Kerala were full of stories on a spy thriller with sex, money and politics. There were, however, a few media houses that stood out, like Asianet News, that called the police's bluff from the very beginning. But they were handed a defamation case by the police then. Now, despite Nambi Narayanan being absolved of all charges, his problems didn't end there. Just a few months later, the CPM-led Kerala government reopened the case and ordered a further investigation. This was challenged in court and the case dragged on for another couple of years until the Supreme Court quashed the Kerala government's move. But having killed his career and his reputation, the ISRO scientist was determined to get justice. He sought not only compensation from the state, but also action against the police officers who fabricated the case. Successive state governments had refused to take action against any of the police officers, despite the CBI report recommending so. In September 2018, the Supreme Court awarded a compensation of 50 lakh rupees to Nambi Narayanan for being subjected to mental cruelty. The court also ordered that a committee led by Justice D.K. Jain be set up to probe the role played by police officers in falsely implicating Nambi Narayanan and the others. This report, which was submitted in April 2021, suggested that this case was part of a conspiracy and recommended that a detailed investigation take place. Based on this, the Supreme Court ordered the CBI to investigate the case. In June 2021, the CBI registered an FIR against 18 former officers of the Kerala Police and the Intelligence Bureau. This case is still on. Before you go, I just want to quickly let you know that the newsman has been bringing you Let Me Explain every week for over six months now. If you value our work, do support us by becoming a member of the News Minute. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as always, if you've liked this video, hit the like button and share this video with your friends.